Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So all too often, I feel that biblical scholars and theologians tend to overanalyze Paul and try to bring out more of what Paul is trying to say than is actually really there. They think he's writing definitive theological statements, when in reality, I think he's just trying to convey the transformation that Christ had in his life, the grace and love that he felt and wants all of his churches that he founded to experience and to live into as well. And this letter to Philippi is no different. As a prisoner, when he wrote this letter, it is not uncommon for people in uncertain times to remember their lives and faith during struggles. Paul starts by telling us his origin story, that he is a true Hebrew, born of the tribe of Benjamin, one of the 12 original tribes, and a founder of Israel. He is an ardent follower of the law, a Pharisee even. He is so confident in his adherence to the law that he says he is blameless and righteous from it. If you're looking for the most sinless and righteous person under the law, Paul is your guy. Yet then he shifts. All his past he claims to be a loss because of his faith in Christ. Why? What caused the shift? He sounds like he took a lot of pride in his adherence to the law. Why the change? For a long time, Christianity has taken this passage as Paul rejecting his Jewishness. Him rejecting the Torah has actually caused a lot of pain to the Jewish community. But I don't think that's what he's actually saying. To me, it sounds like Paul realized that his orientation was off before before he encountered Jesus. If you notice from Paul's past, he did not mention God in his autobiography. He talked about his following the law, and, but not about it being a gift to him and his people. I think he realized that his focus was off. The Torah was not about justifying oneself, but knowing that God desires to be close to God's own, that it's a gift from a just and loving God. Paul saw that he made himself the center of righteousness instead of seeing God as the center of all things. Paul's encounter with God and the person of Jesus changed him. He no longer saw righteousness as something gained through his own merit, but through faith in God's desire to be with God's own people, to reconcile us back to God's own self out of God's love. It allowed him to see God's covenants with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the covenant of the law with the Hebrew people through Moses, and through Jesus Christ, as as God trying to always reconcile humanity back to God's self, and Jesus was just the newest way that that occurred. That through Christ, we are freely given God's undeserved grace, that our righteousness comes from God and God alone, That through this, Jesus invites us all to join himself in his life and death and resurrection. That we are benefactors of an amazing grace from a God that marks us at God's own forever. All of this is unmerited and undeserved. Our baptism is the sacrament that exemplifies this grace that Paul experienced. In our catechism, it states that a sacrament is an outward visible sign of an inward spiritual grace. The outward visible sign of baptism is the water in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the inward grace is joining Christ in his death and resurrection, the forgiveness of sins, new life in the Holy Spirit, and birth into God's family, the church. Our baptism invites us to become part of the church, the body of Christ. It is a sign of God's adoption of us. It is a grace from a covenant that is unearned and undeserved to join Christ in his acts of salvation and reconciliation. And it's an invitation for us to join in God's transformation of the world, starting first with us. As Paul felt his faith in Christ led him to joining Christ in his death in the hope to gain his resurrection, our baptism asks us to join this as well. 
to join Christ's death, to live in Christ's resurrection as we grow in our likeness of Christ. And I know today we're baptizing James into this new fold, and it's a lot for us to take on on his behalf, but he won't be doing it alone. All baptized people are joined into this covenant with God, and we're all supporting him and each other in that walk of faith. We all share in each other's journey as we grow in our likeness of Christ, and we vow, literally, to support one another and James and everyone else on their spiritual journeys. We all, as people who are filled with this unearned grace and love, share in Christ's resurrection of the world. And we will, with God's help. Amen.